Hi, I'm Mike from Mike's Carburetor Parts. Uh, I'm going to be doing uh, a video on rebuilding this uh, Marvel Shebler carburetor, one barrel carburetor. Um, this one has happens to fit a Wisconsin engine, but uh, the, all the Marvel Sheblers of this design are uh, the TSX type are, are all, all very similar. If you can do one, you can do them all. Now there's uh, basically three types of, of this uh, Marvel Shebler. Uh, there's an A, B, and C. Uh, the A has a uh, fixed power jet adjustment, so it won't have this on it. There won't be any way to adjust it. Uh, the B type, which is this one, has the large uh, adjusting screw on it. Uh, so this is a B. There's also a C type. It also has an adjuster, adjustable screw, but it's, it's, it's much smaller and it goes at a diagonal. Uh, so a little bit of trivia. The uh, identification tag uh, on this one is right here. Uh, this is what I used to find the, the carburetor kit. It says TSX770. So I take that and I put it in my search box on my website and uh, click to go and uh, it came up with uh, a kit number 5007. Um, that's a, a very popular kit, kit for these. Uh, for the tractor types that are like this, uh, for these those of you that are working on tractors, uh, uh, Oliver or uh, Alice Shebler, whatever it is, uh, excuse me, Alice Chalmers, uh, we have uh, tractor kits also, uh, and they're pretty good kits. And they come; uh, they're more complete. They come with a new uh, throttle shaft, generally, and a lot of times a new choke shaft. Um, at any rate, uh, but when you start talking about throttle shafts, it gets very specific. So uh, the kits have to ha be very specific for one thing, and so for certain tractors. Anyway, I kind of got off there. So we're going to rebuild this first. We're going to uh, disassemble it. And uh, we'll, when, once we get it all disassembled, we'll put it in a bucket here. I got this uh, black bucket I put all my parts in. And uh, we'll take it apart. And first we'll take the uh, power valve adjuster out. So you, as you see, there's a spring on it. That's your power valve. And we'll take the ball screws out. I've had this apart. I, uh, I want to make sure everything... Uh, came out okay. I didn't want to waste your time on uh, things that were frozen. And there was plenty of them. Um, anyway, that's your uh, uh, float bowl screws. we got your idle mixer screw right here. And uh, when we get it apart, I'll show you how. Well, maybe you can see it. you got a little hole right here. And uh, that's for the idle mixer screw. And uh, uh, when you close your uh, throttle valve like that, uh, you see this little hole here, um, you still have a way for the fuel to get in. So at idle, uh, you're going to get a little bit of fuel and air through this little hole here. And what this does is it basically it, it, it uh, adjusts the mixture of the fuel and the, and the uh, air that's going into it for idle. So that's basically uh, this pretty simple little concept there. Uh, let's see. These uh, a lot of times will come in the kit. You're, idle mixture screw and uh, they generally do so you get a new one so you, you'll be able to just throw this away uh, for any reason you got to use one uh, make sure there's no ridges or or marks on the on the tip right there okay so we did that um, we'll take the two halves apart and uh, here's our little venturi thing and then so we got our float here um, kind of see where that one's adjusted they'll generally well we'll get into adjustment when we're, when we're in but generally end up being about level uh, so we're going to take our float apart and that's just by uh, taking this pin out here and removing it um, we're going to test the float by the way you can buy these we do have these floats uh, what we what you do is uh, heat up a pan of water doesn't uh, have to be boiling but it needs to be pretty hot and then you immerse this in it and if there's any uh, creaks, uh, excuse me, cracks or, or holes in it uh, bubbles are going to come out right away so uh, it'll be easy to see. So there's that. Okay this is your main jet here. 
Some of these will have an economizer jet. They'll go off right over here. Looks just like this one. Alright, got the needle. We'll get it out of there. And the seat. Notice there's a gasket that'll go around the seat. The new one will have one on there. Okay. Um, take this little clean out plug out here. Uh, let's see. I got it loose. Now, uh, this was kind of froze in. So, what I do on these kind of things, I'll get a uh, uh, impact screwdriver and uh, put it in there and uh, hit it while I turn it and uh, bang on a little bit and they'll usually come loose that way. You can also heat them with a torch here if you need to. Just take your time on those kind of things and uh, you know work with them and uh, with it a little bit until uh, you get it loose and you know don't force it to, you'll end up stripping everything. Uh, so just take your time. You don't want to have to drill it out and all that kind of thing, a little gasket. I think that was from the uh, power adjustment. Okay, so we're going to take out the uh, throttle plate now and the throttle shaft. We want to get it nice and clean so that it gets good to action. And I usually mark these. I put a little mark there and then I'll put a little mark on the throttle body here. Kind of a deep one so it stays there. And uh, because I want to put it back in exactly the same position uh, these need to seal and if you put them in backwards or something you may leave a little gap in them. I actually believe these can uh, these are offset so they kind of go in one way but you can, you can flip them over and then it may not seal quite as good. So it's kind of worn to place right like that and uh, we don't want any air around so we'll get it put back the same, same way. Now on these screws uh, check the bottom if they're mushroomed over. A lot of times uh, uh, they'll get mushroomed over so they don't uh, uh, vibrate out and fall in your engine which you don't want for sure. Um, get your little Dremel tool and uh, if you don't have a Dremel tool buy one. It's, it, it, they're worth having around. Anyway you, you can grind these down level with the shaft, the, the two ends of the screws and get it all ground down and, um, and then these will uh, come out fairly easy. They always do. If you don't grind them down there's a good chance you're going to break them in the throttle shaft. Now if you happen to have a tractor where you're getting a kit with a throttle shaft, a new throttle shaft, that I guess that would be okay, but uh, in many cases uh, they aren't available. So take the two screws out. And there we go, and uh, it simply pulls out. And we're going to clean this where after we get it. Uh, put it through the cleaner. We're going to buff it out with our buffer, with our uh, wire uh, buffer, and uh, get all the, any kind of uh, dirt and build up off of it so that it moves freely. Uh, you got a little packing here. It's actually just a little brass bushing that goes in here. Um, you did a little just pop out. Like the so you'll get a new one in your kit, or at least you will with our kit. Okay, so that's what it looks like right there. The open end goes in the inside. All right, and that's it. Uh, generally, you don't have to bush these. Uh, they usually wear pretty good. So, uh, by the way, your identification tag, I just happened to see, uh, notice this. Uh, on some of them, they're on the side here. Uh, but almost all these have something, some identification tag, and the Marvel Shoveler always starts with a TSX or a DTSX uh, is another type. Uh, so you want to look for that. Always uh, match up your carburetor number when you're buying a carburetor kit. That, may, that way you're sure you're getting the correct kit. Uh, there's a lot of kits for Marvel Shoveler, and uh, uh, you may get one. Everything's the same except for one little item, and that one little item will drive you crazy. Well, there you go. So we're going to come out with the uh, main nozzle here. And uh, 
Let's see, what am I using here? A little 3 8 deep socket is uh, what I'm using here. Oh, and by the way, uh, another tip. Uh, get your digital camera out and uh, take as many pictures as you want uh, about uh, you know where things are positioned, how they're in. See the little gasket on that? We'll have to replace that one, but just want you to notice there is one. Um, and that comes out. Now let's see, there's nothing down there that comes out. It's a little... Oh, here's your uh, drain. A couple of different drain. You got a screw here. You got a drain bolt. This was another one that was hard to get out. I had to bang on it a little bit. Um, this right here, this is a, a porous uh, brass thing, uh, whatever, I'm not sure what it's called. Anyway, uh, you don't take that out. We'll just clean it and blow it out real good. Uh, some may have a felt packing in here. That that you will replace. So, yeah, And those are both, at, all that's at the bottom of the float bowl. All right, let's see. So we got it almost stripped. I'm going to take out the choke. Um, and I tell you why, it's kind of complicated. So uh, be sure you take digital pictures of it uh, so you know how it goes back in there. Uh, you know, make some marks, whatever you got to do. Uh, I, I, I take a digital picture. You just leave it, uh, uh, even if I uh, I'll probably remember. But uh, if, I, if I have any kind of question at all, I just refer back to my picture. Anyhow, this choke uh, valve, you want to work very free or it's going to give you trouble. So I shouldn't be using a crescent wrench on this nut, but that's what I have in front of me. Anyhow, you, all, you want all this stuff back in the same position. This is a manual choke. And in simple terms, uh, when the engine is cold and you're first starting it, you will close it and it's be closed like that and, uh, and that, that allows uh, fuel to be sucked in uh, to the carburetor until the engine can get started. So there's the little spring that goes on there. And um, same thing on these screws. Check the other side. Uh, these look like they might come out real easy. There's, they're not mushroomed over. And uh, so I haven't had these uh, this one apart. I could have used a little wider screwdriver. I always use a screwdriver. The tip as wide as the screw as you can, as close as you can. Uh, that'll uh, keep them from slipping out of the screw and damaging the screw. You know how hard it is to get a screw in and out once it gets damaged. Some of these little screws are very hard to find. It's, it's not that you can't find them. They're just hard to just run down the part, uh, hardware store and pick some up sometimes. They're kind of a special size. Okay. So once you get the two screws out, you see the flap just comes out and goes in just like this. Then here's our rod. See, it's very, uh, very sticky in there from from all the dirt and stuff. Um, and this one's actually been clean, so I'll take this and then buff it up real good so that it moves real loose in there. And you know, if it leaks out through through here a little bit, it's not going to hurt anything. It's not that big of a deal. Um, this has. Let's see. I'm not sure if that's replaceable. It looks like a little bushing right there. I'm going to leave that in for now. Make sure I have a new one for it before I replace it. But it looks like it has another one of those brass bushings. Um, and that's about it for taking that apart. And so what we're going to do now is uh, we'll put it in the cleaner and clean it. And uh, we will uh, now use, I have a uh, soda blaster. Uh, don't use anything, any kind of uh, bead blasting on any carburetor. Um, it just it it takes uh, the media will 
chip away at your metal, uh, could damage it. it the, this, the, the little uh, media will get stuck in the orifices and whatnot. Uh, soda you can pretty much wash out of it. So anyhow, there we go. We'll continue on with uh, putting it back together as soon as we get it all cleaned up. Thank you for watching.